The question, why am I here, is a Swiss Army knife for some of life's most difficult problems. Most of us are familiar with a Swiss Army knife. If you've never seen one, I brought one here with me today. This is what they look like. They're an iconic example of a tool that is portable, powerful, and versatile. We can carry with us everywhere. It can help us solve lots of different kinds of problems. The original Swiss Army knife was invented about 130 years ago to help Swiss Army soldiers solve some of the problems they run into in the field. So there's a small knife blade, can opener to access their rations, and a, a tool for helping them repair their rifles. And since then, the design has changed quite a bit. So some modern Swiss Army knives have tools like laser pointers and flash drives, and some of them are equipped with a dazzling array of tools which may not actually have a use. But the original idea, the elegant simplicity, has stood the test of time. And now, the Swiss Army knife is a symbol of versatility. They're really useful for cracking open a bottle or cleaning your nails, but for anything more complicated or, or difficult, they don't really help us very much. But here's another one that most of us carry with us everywhere. Our cell phones are 21st century digital Swiss Army knives. They help us connect with each other, capture moments, stay informed, entertain ourselves. But even these powerful tools can't help us with the most difficult challenges that we face in life. Problems like motivating ourselves to do difficult or scary or uncomfortable things, or even bigger problems than that, finding happiness and meaning and direction in life. These kind of problems we have to deal with a huge number of. Sometimes, maybe they'll pop up once and we solve them and move on with our lives. Other times, the same problem can come back again and again and again. And those are the problems I'm talking about when I say that the question, why am I here, is a Swiss Army knife. That question is a tool that we can carry with us everywhere. It's powerful, portable, and versatile. It can help us solve lots of our problems. I'm going to demonstrate some of those ways for you here. But first, I need to tell you that it's not really just one question. It's actually three. Why am I here? Why are you here? And why are we here? And depending on which version of the question that you ask and how you focus it, you're going to get a wide variety of different results. So first, let's ask the question and emphasize the here. And then we will focus on something that we all have in common, we can all relate to, the experience of going to college. Why are we here in college right now? What do we hope to get from this experience? Why did we, you know, why did we show up? How do we get here? So some days, after I've aced a difficult exam and I'm strolling across a sunlit campus, the birds singing beautifully and the breeze gently caressing my skull, I get the feeling like I belong here, like I've made a great decision, I'm in the right place. But then there are other days when I am sleep-deprived and hunched over a table in a corner staring at a blank sheet of paper and wondering how the hell I'm going to complete this assignment that's due in two hours. I get a completely different set of feelings that you may be able to relate to. And I think, I don't belong here. I've made a horrible mistake. Why am I here? What am I doing here? But just asking that question, why am I here, helps me to remember, ah, I love what I'm doing here. Most days, I'm excited to come to class. I'm passionate about what I'm learning. And if you ever feel that way, asking why am I here can help you to remember and tough it through those difficult times. But what if, when you ask that question, you don't get such a straightforward or confident answer? What if you really don't know why you're here? Or else, you ask the question and the answer is, somebody told me I should be here. I should come here after high school. The college is the place you go to start a happy life. Or maybe the answer is, my parents expect me to be here. I've got family pressure to get a college degree. Or even worse, what if the reason why you're here is because you've spent enough time here and taken, so much, taken on so much college debt that you think the only reason, the only way to go forward is to tough it out even if you don't enjoy what you're studying? If any of those things are you, then asking the question, why am I here, might really help you make a tough decision. It might help you step back and stop spending any more time and money until you get things figured out. I'm certainly not suggesting that anybody here should drop out of college today if it's getting tough, but I can tell you from experience that college is not a race. You don't have to start when anyone else starts. You don't have to finish as quickly as possible. It can be about you and your goals and your motivations and your time. Most of the people that I went to high school with graduated college a decade ago. And when I think about that, sometimes I think maybe I'm a little bit behind. But then I remember at 18 or 19 or 20 years old, I would have been a horrible student. And I'm not the best student now, by any means, but at least I know why I'm here. I know what I want out of college. And that's something to think about. Something else to think about. There's a famous, successful entrepreneur named Peter Thiel. 
who recently wrote that universities can become a place where people who had big plans in high school, big aspirations for themselves, get stuck competing against other really smart people for jobs that may be very high paying, but not a whole lot of personal satisfaction involved with them. Is that why we're here? Are we here to work so hard for the biggest paycheck possible? Maybe. You know, something else that I hear sometimes is people come to college to get a diploma, to get your name on a piece of paper. And that's certainly something to aspire to. And it's no easy task. And if you keep your GPA up and you attend all the lectures, take notes, do good on the test, then eventually you graduate with a diploma. But if that's all that you get out of this experience, you may be missing out on an intellectual playground that we're in right now. So many opportunities for us to learn and grow and challenge ourselves. We can make real discoveries right now. We can invent new things. We can solve real problems and make an impact on our communities and the world. Why are we here if not to exercise those skills and flex those muscles? You know, we can also focus down with the question a little bit more closely to a specific place that we are. So why are we here at the University of Tulsa, for example? Well, what is it about this place that makes it unique? What are the opportunities that exist here that exist nowhere else? And how can we take advantage of those opportunities? One way you might not know about, one aspect of the University of Tulsa is that Forbes magazine recently ranked it the number four best college in the United States for international students pursuing STEM degrees. Number four, just below MIT, Princeton, and Columbia. Now, that gives me a sense of pride to be here at the University of Tulsa. Like, we're up there on the list, we're on the map. But it also gives me an idea. If TU is one of the best places in the United States to find young, bright students from all over the world, I wonder how much I could broaden my perspective and learn about world culture just by walking up to someone and asking them, why are you here? Maybe not start the conversation like that. You know, you want to establish a rapport and then get into the conversation, ask why you're here. But if they can teach me something, maybe I can teach them something as well. Maybe I can be an ambassador. That's just one of the many things we can find here at the University of Tulsa that aren't, aren't available anywhere else. So zooming out further from the University of Tulsa, what about the city of Tulsa itself, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 2017? Why are we here? What is it that we can do here we can't do anywhere else? Well, I'll let Forbes magazine speak again on behalf of Tulsa. They ranked Tulsa the number one city in the United States for young entrepreneurs. 2013. But if you look around, you might understand and see why they made that distinction, the city of Tulsa. There's a lot of enthusiasm here, a lot of momentum going on. This is a great place to be. And sure, we've got our problems. Tulsa's got problems. Oklahoma's got problems. But those problems aren't a reason to run away or find someplace cooler or hipper or better to live. Those problems, in entrepreneur speak, are opportunities to create value and to change people's lives. And so why are we here in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2017? Maybe we're here to believe in Tulsa. Maybe we're here to make a difference. Maybe we're here to help Tulsa come into its own. So now we're going to switch from the here part of the question. We're going to focus on you, another tool in the, uh, in the Swiss Army knife. Why are you here? What is it that makes you special? How are you uniquely talented and experienced and positioned to make a difference? You might not know. You know, we're all so, we all have so much power and potential, sometimes it's really hard to know our value. But the truth is, no one else has your experiences or has your perspective. No one else can give voice to the same thoughts that you're thinking. There's a really creative and brilliant guy named Gordon McKenzie that wrote something that resonated with me a lot. He said, you have a masterpiece inside of you one unlike any that's ever been created or ever will be. If you go to your grave without painting your masterpiece, it will not get painted. No one else can paint it, only you. Why are we here? Well, Gordon thinks we're here to paint masterpieces, and I agree with him. I think we're here to make this life count. But what if, in the course of trying to make life count, trying to use this opportunity to make a big difference in the world, and paint your masterpiece? What if instead it feels like you're throwing yourself against a brick wall and getting nowhere? Well, then you can ask the question, why am I here? How did I get here? What have I already accomplished and overcome? What challenges, what barriers have I broken through to get to this spot? And then the brick wall may not look so big and scary. Why am I here? Who helped me get here? Who helped you get here? All the people that supported us, that encouraged us, our parents, teachers, mentors, they put a lot into us, and we can pay them back with our own success. And we can pay it forward to people we've never met before. 
because that's how we make this world better, one life at a time. You know, I think the Greek philosopher Plato really said it best. He said, one of his pupils asked him, Plato, why are you here? Plato said, I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> Actually, that was, uh, that was Roddy Piper. But you get the point. You know, why am I here? That can be a rallying cry. It can help us to break through challenging situations. Now we're going to talk about the third and final way that I want to I wanted to describe to you that the phrase, the question, why am I here, can be used. Focusing on the why. And this is really the first version that I ever asked. I was a freshman in high school, taking a non-Western culture course, taught by a professor named Wayne McDowell, who was really great at making it fun and interesting and exciting to learn about all types of other cultures and religions I'd never heard of before. And it became my favorite class that year. It was a really challenging class, too, because I had to take furious notes and read every chapter in order to keep up with the material. But it was challenging in another really important way, too. It was the first experience that I had that made me begin to question my religious beliefs. And as high school went on, taking a world history class, I learned about the ancient Greeks. You know, if I had been born in ancient Greece, I'd probably have believed in and worshipped Poseidon and Athena and Zeus. And I wondered, because modern textbooks call all of those beliefs ancient mythology, I wonder if my current religious beliefs would be the ancient mythology of the future. It really started to make me think about why I believe what I believe. And so now when I ask the question, why am I here, I'm reminded to challenge and to doubt my beliefs and to look for truth, even if it's uncomfortable. And it is uncomfortable and it's scary sometimes, and sometimes it's hard to know where to start. And if you would like to, and you don't exactly know where to start, may I direct you to a very obvious place, the internet, Wikipedia, there's a nice page that I like to peruse every once in a while called the List of Religions and Spiritual Traditions. It's got hundreds of links. And after a deep dive for a few hours on a page like that, you might start to think to yourself that there's no way you can ever know what's really true. Or maybe you can think, there's no way we'll ever all agree on what's true. And you might be right. And you might, after swimming around for a little bit, decide that you had it right all along. But there's a third possibility. What if? One day far in the future, we really do find out what's true, something that everybody can agree on. Well, we can work towards that faraway future by setting a course right now. And we do that by questioning our own beliefs and listening to each other. And by looking up at the night sky and asking, why are we here? It's a question that can unite us as humans. A question that connects us, eight or so billion other humans that are living right now on this planet. And we have a lot of differences, but at least one thing unites us in common. Everyone at some point in their lives has wondered why we're here. So the question, why am I here, can help us find strength and gratitude and direction. It can help us find our passion and our purpose. It can help us appreciate the people that we meet and the places that we go. And it can help us reconcile the past, master the present, and create the future. And that's why the question, why am I here, is a Swiss Army knife, and that's why you should carry it with you everywhere. Thanks. <laughs>